Hey, how can I help you? Hey, I got a 1918 Federal Reserve note. Okay, this is pretty cool. Most people don't realize this note right here, you know, it's $1,000, but in 1918, this could buy a lot. This could buy a small house. You could buy a large house back then, son. No, it couldn't buy a large house back then. It could buy a small house back then. Large house. My grandmother collected all kinds of things, and she just gave me a whole box, and the note was actually in it. I think the bill is interesting. You'd definitely be balling if you had a couple of these back in 1918 in your pocket. Believe it or not, you can still spend this, cash it in, and everything like that. It's worth more than the face value, so I wouldn't suggest doing it. But, um... Well, I haven't seen a $1,000 bill before. Why did they actually start making those? It just was a lot more convenient. You needed larger bills. You have to realize this is 1918. There's not credit cards. There's not ATMs. In fact, if you bought something, you paid cash for it. Let me say this, son. These old bills are pretty cool, but I prefer the new ones. Nothing better than a crisp $100 bill. Most people don't realize the Federal Reserve is not part of the federal government. Believe it or not, it is a pseudo-private organization. 1913, it was Morgan, Chase, and some other bankers got together, and they basically came up with the whole idea of the Federal Reserve, wrote the bills and everything, and presented them to Congress and got it passed. And it's sort of like this really shadowy, weird thing, which I don't dig. But uh, <laughs> that's who prints all of our money and uh, who was printing it back then. Wow. I've seen lots of old high dollar bills like this go for tens of thousands of dollars. Since this one isn't graded, it's hard to tell exactly what I can get out of it, but I'm thinking four to five grand. What are you looking to get out of it? Well, I saw $10,000 on, online. I know it's not in the best condition, but how about six? How about no? Me and my father have dealt with these for years. I know all about them. Um, but these things, condition is everything. It's been folded a few times. It's been it looks like it's been folded and they ironed it back out to make it look flat. But um, they are rare. Remember, it is a $1,000 bill. Very few people were walking around with these things, so there's not a lot in circulation. I'll give you like two grand. Can you do 3,500? One of the difficulties in selling these things, when you start getting collectibles that are a lot of money, the group of people that can afford them is a lot less. I'll tell you what, I'll go 2,500 bucks and I won't go no more. You say 26, I'm gonna tell you to leave. 2,500? Cash? Cash money. Okay. All right, it's a deal, man. Every buy at the shop is a risk, especially in things that need to be graded. I'm hoping it'll come back graded as a 15 to 20 out of a possible 70. If it does, it should be a nice little profit. Well, you're about to find out if that 2,500 was well spent. I guarantee it was well spent. Let's see. Are you ready? What is it? It is... More bubble wrap. Open the damn thing, Rick. It's fake. <laughs>I'm kidding. <laughs> What'd it come back as? Uh, it's a 25, um, very fine. Perfect would be a 70, which would make it worth like $100,000 probably. But uh, this is far from that. So I'm thinking like seven grand it's worth. I'm trying to give me a damn heart attack. Right. Want you to apologize to me? I'm not going to apologize. I never said you did anything wrong. I just said you should have found out what it was worth before you paid for it. No, you basically called me an idiot, and I think you should apologize. I didn't call you an idiot. I'm just saying you didn't know what it was worth when you bought it. Oh, shut up, all of you. Give me that thing, Rick. Give it up. There you go, Dad. I'm going to sit here and examine this for a while. You two get back to work. I don't know why you're examining it. It's already been graded. <laughs>